gender, and sexuality are gifts of God, and the United Church welcomes people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. As a church, we envision a future where everyone belongs. I'm talking to Michael Blair, the General Secretary of the United Church of Canada, about how mission and service embraces people of all sexual orientations. Michael, it's really good to be with you. It's good to be with you, Alexa. I wanted to start by uh, getting a sense of the global and current issues that are facing uh, sexual and gender minorities at this time. I think um, generally uh, across the, the globe there's concern about legal rights or human rights of um, folks who identify uh, along the spectrum of um, sexual minorities. Uh, in many countries there are legal obstacles even at the risk of being put to death or uh, imprisoned if one is caught in, in a relationship that is not sanctioned by the states. I think the other piece is the continued intolerance of religious uh, communities who continue to um, offer a perspective that folks along the continuum uh, are somehow um, not <laughs> not human uh, in their practice. And in some contexts, those religious communities um, have influence on the political system, which further entrenches uh, the challenges of right. I think there's questions around um, migration. Uh, many uh, folks are having to leave their communities. I know, for instance, uh, people in Uganda find themselves in Kenya trying to find safe um, ha haven because of the intolerance uh, in that particular country. Um, in Ghana, for example, there is still a, a quite a strong entrenchment of kind of a religious system that um, alienates uh, people along the continuum. So those are some of, some of the challenges, I think, both kind of the political, the human rights, and uh, the kind of religious intolerance. And when you think about the United Church of Canada and specifically, how are we meeting some of those challenges? One of the things we're starting to do is that we need to support um, communities in some of the, our partner countries uh, who are trying to advocate and stand up for the human rights of sexual and gender minorities. So that's been uh, in some ways a new revelation for us. One of the challenges, I think, partly because of our partner principle that we have in the United Church, we have not wanted to impose our viewpoints on our partners. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we support and work with partners in their context, some of whom would not be necessarily comfortable with the United Church's uh, stance on inclusivity, mm -hmm. and yet at the same time, um, they are struggling to meet the challenges within their context. Right. But of late, I think we have recognized that we need to be much more intentional at supporting uh, initiatives that are aimed at supporting the human rights of sexual minorities uh, in some of our partner um, relationships. Bold discipleship. Yeah, bold discipleship, yeah. Or dare and justice. Um, you know, one of our partners in Kenya <coughs> has um, advocated strongly for the rights, human rights of um, sexual minorities, and that has caused um, him to be in jail, uh, caused him to risk his life uh, to be able to do that. And, you know, we need to be partnering and supporting him in the work that he's doing uh, towards kind of transformation. Yeah, it can feel so um, uh, so difficult to sort of see the impact of the work here, but when you bring these stories, we can see that this is a life and death yeah. matter. Yeah. And then I think when we look into the life and ministry of Jesus, um, I, I'm fascinated uh, by the fact that most of the gospel stories 
are about Jesus' encounter with people who were excluded from society, excluded from the kind of religious life. And in fact, you know, I would say probably 99% of the stories are about that encounter with those who are on the margins and, and Jesus saying, you belong, there's a place for you. The mission and service uh, of the, the United Church enables um, the church to partner with people who are struggling for wholeness, fullness of life. Um, you know, a couple of quick stories. Um, one of the places that the Mission Service Fund has contributed to is um, Jakarta Theological Seminary in Indonesia. And um, Stephen Solomon, who is a professor there, who has recently died in the last couple of years, um, for 20 years um, held a consultation around LBGT inclusion uh, in the life of, in the society, uh, in the church and in the society in, uh, in Indonesia. Christians are a minority in Indonesia and the Muslim, um, the Muslim community in Indonesia is very um, resistive to any kind of full inclusion of sexual minorities. But for 20 years, Stephen did that. A few years ago, um, there was, uh, the government came up with a policy to um, punish people who were caught in any kind of sexual behavior, uh, quote unquote, non-normative. Mm -hmm. And um, the leaders of the church in Indonesia wrote a joint letter to the government um, basically saying to the government, you can't do this, <laughs> right? And, and what's interesting is that every one of the leaders of the churches were people who had gone through uh, Stephen's uh, consultation, mm -hmm. and they had an understanding. And the irony was that even though in their own kind of local uh, church setting, there is still not this kind of full acceptance, but they understood the need to stand with those who were oppressed, and so they spoke out. And uh, there's a young man uh, two years ago, no, about four years ago, the first student to ever come out uh, came out, and today he is an incredible advocate for um, LBGTQ rights and an advocate around helping people deal with the challenges of HIV. And he has close to a couple thousands um, people. And he's using Twitter, he's using um, Instagram, he's using TikTok uh, to get, his, get his, his message out. And that's one of, you know, the, the um, mission service c contributed to, to that um, process of, of, of seeing that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've... Uh, a few years ago, uh, through Mission Service, we held a consultation with a number of United Church partners here in Canada. We brought our partners from overseas here in Canada to have a conversation with them about how it is that we in the United Church, given our history, may be supportive in some of the work that they are doing. And one of the things they said to us, you need to help us in our context. So we've had a consultation in Latin America where we brought church and church leaders, practitioners, and theologians together to begin to think about how the church can begin to move to create a place of openness and acceptance. And uh, we are about to hold a consultation in Asia, hosted in, in the Philippines to bring uh, Asian theologians, some Canadian uh, uh, folks uh, together to kind of think through again, how might the church be a place for liberation in the life of those communities? And, and that all happens because of the generosity of folks who contribute to the Mission Service Fund. It's clear how participating in the generosity of Mission and Service makes a difference. How can individuals make a difference? What can we do in our own lives? One is, I think, Relationship, relationship, relationship. 
I think it's important that uh, as individuals we build relationship with folks who are on the margins and particularly folks who are marginalized because of their sexual identity. I think it's important to kind of hear the stories, to hear the pain, but also to recognize how, how it is we may uh, help to influence. I think it's, it's also important to recognize that systems, understanding systems and understanding our role in systems is also a critical point. Uh, so that part of hearing the story is also beginning to say, what are the points of advocacy that needs to happen? How do I advocate uh, on behalf of the, the issues? So issues around, for instance, housing, issues around uh, income, um, you know, I think uh, uh, issues around violence. We know that, for instance, trans uh, people, and particularly trans people of color, uh, experience tremendous violence. They, there's healthcare costs, there is, they have issues around um, uh, employment. So how can we, in the Canadian context, um, advocate for um, support? And I think that's, we can do that collectively, but we can do that individually. Our, our MPs, our MPPs need to hear from us that, that this is an important value for us. I think the other thing uh, is that we have a certain, um, and every time I, I talk to my um, friends who are part of the sexual minority spectrum overseas, I recognize that in the Canadian context, we have a political system that supports us. That's not true in other parts of the world. And so sometimes we can get very comfortable in our, in our Canadian context, but we also need to understand how important it is for us to engage and support uh, folks in contexts where the political system doesn't support them. Your gift for mission and service will help create spaces of welcome for healing, learning, and liberation.